Okay. Go, Natalie. Uh, in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We thank you for this beautiful anointing day you have given us. We come to you today asking for your guidance, support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in a meaningful discussion and allow us to go cro grow closer to you through your teachings. Fill us with your grace, Lord, so that we may be a source of guidance to others. I ask the Holy Spirit to be with us and talk to us through today's teachings. I ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So, my dear sisters, do we have anything to share today? Have we brought anything to share? We're all so special, aren't we? Praise Jesus and God is doing so many things through us. And he's just using us as his vessels. We are empty, but he's filling us with his love and all his gifts of blessings and so much love that we have to share it with the others. Praise Jesus. Any testimonies to share? No one's talking to me? Sister, I have a, a very quick testimony to share. Oh, actually. yes. Praise God. Praise Go ahead. God. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I had had symptoms of a... Hello? Hello? Is she frozen or is it my internet? No, she's frozen. Oh, so we haven't heard her then. You know how she said my brand with that day. So now I'm very careful. Can you hear me now? No, and now we can hear you, but we Praise haven't God. heard anything. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I hit I hit mute on the, my headphones oh, by mistake, oh, okay. so okay, it wasn't okay. showing as mute on Zoom. Okay, okay. Okay, praise God. So um, I had had very bad symptoms of a, a, a chest infection for about two weeks, and uh, the Holy Spirit prompted me to join Sister Judy's Tongues session on Monday, and um, praise God. The symptoms just afterwards, the symptoms just lifted uh, throughout the day. Um, and I even, I suppose at the end of the session, I had felt so much better and it just progressively improved. Like I'd had kind of diff difficulty with breathing and um, I'd felt really, really sick with it. And just the following day, it, the difference was just incredible. And even th I'd been joining all week and just throughout the rest of the day. So it's at 8.30 a.m. Irish time and throughout the day just supernatural things had just been happening all praise week god. so praise god and thank praise you jesus god. like the, jesus. the right people being in the right place um just at the right kind time of at the right time um people contacting me uh, offering to help with proofreading and e-writing i was just like praise you jesus thank hallelujah. you jesus thank you hallelujah jesus. so i just wanted to praise and thank the lord for that because uh, thank you so Jesus. awesome so awesome yes it's yeah it's so true isn't it and and that's anointing that's you're just sent you're directed to the right spot at the right time amen praise jesus thank you jesus that's why i'm saying we are so blessed we don't follow the blessings we follow the blesser praise so jesus. true sister <laughs> Praise Jesus. Okay, anyone else? Hello. Anyone else has anything to share? So, you know, start of the session, we were just talking about, we were asking each other how we were. Now listen to this, everyone, right? Susan, were you there? So I asked uh, Sylvia, how are you? And she, her answer was, guess what? What was the answer, Sylvia? 
Hey, where are you? She is too blessed to be stressed. So we Amen. must remember that. Too blessed to be stressed. Praise Jesus. Okay, so nothing to share. Shall we go for the recap? Praise God. Oh. Praise. All right, Baba, Venny. Okay, I'll do the start the recap. Okay. Okay. When brother joined in last week, he shared that he was full of joy because he witnessed simple people coming forward to share the word of God and become blessing to others. Among these preachers was a man who was previously an unbeliever, but now he was now that he was baptized, he has become a blessing to so many others after coming to the word of God. His wife, who was earlier in her shell, has also come out in the open to assist with the revision of the Bible classes during the weekend. Each one was going to do the Lord's work, and this gave Brother a lot of joy. Brother opened his teaching last week on Matthew 6, 19-21, where the word tells us not to lay up treasures upon earth, where moth and rust can corrupt, and where thieves steal, but to lay up treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust can corrupt, and where thieves cannot steal. What treasure is God asking us to store up? The treasure that God is asking us to store up is not a material treasure, but a heavenly treasure. When Solomon asked God for wisdom, he asked for a spiritual treasure that would not corrupt and that no one could steal. From the time we are all conceived in our mother's womb, we all have a selfish mindset and our focus has mainly been on things that are worldly and carnal. What we focus on becomes the treasure we go seeking after. We focus on having good food, good clothing and good shelter. And that is what we go seeking daily in our life. Jesus is telling us to go seeking his kingdom and his righteousness and all those things shall be added unto us by the Father. Peter was a fisherman and Jesus called Peter to seek his kingdom, even though Peter had a good fishing business and knew all about it. Yet Jesus asked Peter that if he loved him, then he should feed his lambs. Peter could have chosen to stay in the fishing business, but Jesus wanted Peter to go after the lost souls. When Peter changed his heart and started to save the lost souls and become fruitful, seeking the kingdom of God, everything was provided for his family. Everything that moths cannot corrupt and which no one could steal was given to Peter and his family. So what are the benefits of spending time in the kingdom of God? Christ's disciples left their fishing business, which was their treasure, and followed Jesus. They are dead and gone. But what they got from that treasure is distributed to each one of us even till date. It has reached the ends of the world. Brother gave us his own example. When people ask him what he does, he says he is without a job and he talks about the greatest treasure which can never be corrupted, never be eaten by moths and which can never rust or be stolen for 16 to 17 hours a day everywhere. And the result that he receives is mind blowing. If he were to make a list of what he received in the last 24 years, he would have to pinch himself to ensure that it wasn't a dream, but a reality. Maria works at the hospital for money, which is a worldly treasure. But on this Zoom platform, she works for free because she is receiving a spiritual treasure. Why does she do this? Because she is seeking the kingdom of heaven. She is filled with joy when lives are changed by the word of God when people are being healed and tears are being washed away by the promise of God, when people are filled from the peace of God, 
by going after the lost souls and coming on the zoom platform maria is building riches in heaven and she is paid in full by our heavenly father what about us unfortunately from childhood we have all been trained to think that working in the world should be our top priority and working in the kingdom of god can be a part time option something to consider if and only we have the spare time we are told to weigh everything according to what gives us a better monetary value in life everything around us is about how much money we are going to earn when we give our time whenever you earn more use your time there only now that kind of teaching is completely wrong if we are to tell others that we join a zoom class and we are evangelizing others no one is excited but the moment you tell others what your designation is and what job you do that sounds very impressive to everybody's ears we all want happiness joy and peace but we are seeking the treasures of this world running after the wrong master we were never told that if we had to seek and serve the kingdom of god from childhood our heavenly father provided provides us with the best of the best and we can get more joy more peace and more happiness than what a secular job can give a well educated person wants to use his skills only in the world and in his career people who have lost jobs work relentlessly to get other jobs resulting in further breakdown and sorrow instead if they choose to seek god and his righteousness everything will be given unto them how can we build and share our treasure at work now being a nurse maria can choose to either be a worldly nurse or a spiritual nurse as a spiritual nurse even if her patient is troubling she chooses to smile when he is abusive she chooses to operate in love the seed that maria plants irritates the demon inside the patient who begins to change because of this patient's troubling behavior maria gets to practice the godly love in her life and instead of grumbling she now begins to thank this person for being there in her life by showing love to this patient she believed she was serving jesus and this godly love has now become her treasure her colleagues become curious to find out the magical solution that has changed this patient's rude behavior and maria now gets the opportunity to share the treasure with them too so we can all see from this example that when maria chooses to apply the teachings of the kingdom of god in her dealings at work her job has now enabled her to live the best life and seek the treasure of heaven the key point here is when we seek god's treasure daily then our worldly jobs will no longer be about collecting dollars and pounds and euros but about collecting the treasure of heaven and sharing the treasures of heaven with the worldly people we encounter what happens when we seek earthly treasures brother gave us an example of maria working hard at her job and buying an expensive diamond necklace with the money she earns she decided one day to show off the expensive piece of jewelry to her colleagues and she wore it to work however at the parking lot somebody steals it along with the necklace being stolen her peace of mind is also stolen she doesn't know how she is going to face her husband this only goes to prove that there is no security in the ornaments that we buy because we are constantly in fear that they could be stolen there is no point in having treasures cause one can even be murdered for such worldly treasures during the covid situation in india people including the doctors had a lot of money but that treasure was of no use to anyone when there was a lack of oxygen cylinders now let us suppose that maria bought expensive clothes 
and because those clothes were so expensive, she kept them only for special occasions and hoarded them in her cupboard. Years later, an occasion arose where she thought in her mind that now I will wear those expensive clothes. However, much to her disappointment, those clothes did not fit her. When she decided to wear an expensive sari, she noticed a big hole caused by a rat. When she decided to wear another silk dress, she noticed that the fabric was falling to pieces. So now what happened to all those expensive clothes that she kept in her cupboard? All those years of saving it for a special occasion was of no use to her now. Her treasure had all gone down the drain. This time, Maria finds some goods at a good price and she stores them to sell them at a profit at a later date. Unfortunately, it rains in Perth and the storeroom gets flooded with rainwater, destroying all those goods. What happened to her treasure? Once again, her treasure has gone down the drain. Jesus said, every treasure on earth is corrupted. It can be eaten by moths, mice, it can be destroyed, and if not, the thieves can steal it. People work hard to get these treasures. But the Lord says, if you seek my kingdom, my father will give you all that you need. Previously, the money that brother earned was all spent at the club. Now, all that money goes into winning the maximum number of souls for the kingdom of God. Because the treasure that brother is seeking has now changed. Brother shared with a priest who gave the center to organize the JCILM retreats that the ministry would not be asking for any donations. They would be teaching the word of God with free stay and free food. The priest wondered how the ministry was going to manage to pay all the bills. This is a live example of how brother believes in the treasure of winning souls. He said to him, he wants to give freely because God gave to him freely. Because he loves each one of us, he wants to give freely. And in turn, each one of us is called to give to others freely. When we give freely what we have received, we will see changes in our life. When our treasure is heavenly, God is faithful. He always gives us a surplus. He also watches over to see how we steward the treasures. If we spend it on worldly things, the supply may dry up. But if we spend it on heavenly things, more is given. Brother had a vision which had come to pass last week. He had a desire to provide the helpline warriors with all the information they needed to minister at their fingertips. The average price for such a software was estimated at 8 lakhs per annum. But God raised people from within the JCILM team who worked together and customize the software for a fractional cost of 5,000 rupees per annum. When using the software to minister, the warriors can now minister to anyone and anywhere at any time. The JCILM team is using their talent to spread the treasures of heaven. Brother also asked for all those who are interested in serving the kingdom of God to join the JCILM team as e-writers. The early Christians were only a handful and they experienced hardship wherever they went. But they were able to survive and overcome it because their treasure was in heaven. They were focused on the heavenly crown of life for eternity. We need to ask ourselves, which crown are you and I chasing? The earthly one, which is short term, or the heavenly crown of life, which is eternal? Brother sees all of us who attended the Bible Zoom class as wearing the crown of glory. We are chosen to practice the true gospel of Christ and to distribute the treasure even in the face of insult and abuse. So what treasure are we going to seek after? Treasures of the earth where moth and dust can corrupt, where thieves steal, or treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust can corrupt and where thieves cannot steal. We are all given that choice and free will to seek what we desire. We need to choose wisely. 
When our dreams are based on the treasures of earth, those treasures can be eaten by moths and stolen by thieves. When our dreams are based on the treasures of heaven, those treasures are going to make us joyful and glad. When we ask the Lord for that treasure and seek that treasure, he will send unknown people in our life. Worldly pressure, pleasure brings us death. Heavenly treasure has no hangover. When we begin to seek the kingdom of God, we will no longer be interested in coveting the treasures of the world. We will no longer be greedy and carnal about worldly things, but we will be coveting the treasures of heaven because we know that the Father is providing everything for us. When we seek the kingdom treasure, God is rejoicing and Jesus seated on the right hand of the Father is saying to each one of us, well done. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Praise Jesus. Vanessa, what should I say? Thank you. Praise God. Praise, Praise God. God. See, don't you feel our life is a ministry? Yes, it and is. Our words are the deeds of a sermon. We are preaching it anyway. And people are listening and watching our behavior. Don't you think? Yes, very true, Maria. Yeah. And when we have that word, you know, and we go deep into that word, what does that do to us? It gives us that treasure. Yes. You know? And we are all created, each one of us, every one of us, wherever we are, we are created to stand out in the crowd for God. Right, And we don't feel, you know, we feel so ordinary sometimes. Oh, Vanessa can do so much. I can't do that much. I'm not ready yet. Right? But we are not that class. We are a class above. We are yes. uncommon, my dear sisters. We are uncommon. And we are so passionate about that word. And the dream that God has put inside of us is uncommon too. It's just so beautiful. Praise God. Yes. And in saying that, we are not chickens. We don't chicken out. We are eagles, as we always say. So you know, we are created for such beautiful purpose. God has put, looking at, you know, seeing Vanessa, listening to her, sharing that word, doing that recap every time. I don't know what is happening inside of me. You know, I don't know about the other sisters. It, you're just not reading it, Vanessa. You're making it your own. You're listening to it. You're making it your own and you're giving it to us. You know, and you're, and you're just, that love of God is just flowing through your speech. Praise God. Yes, I have to say that when, you know, I think this is, this will be the same for the e-writers and the proofreaders. When you're going through the teaching once again, that teaching becomes so personal to you and it speaks to you and you, it just becomes a part of your daily living for, you know, the it's it just becomes very personal so when you're even speaking that word now to someone it's like you're speaking it it becomes your own you're giving it from your uh, right. how the word has touched you yes it just just so awesome and you know yes. and, and we feel it we feel that we are empty vessels we are just empty right created by the father created by him you know, and I always remember that scripture. I think it's 2 Timothy 10, 19, 20. And it really, it really makes me feel who I am. I'm empty. I'm nothing, right? And I have nothing inside of me. But he has created me so beautiful for his glory. Like when we have everything in our house, what we like, we buy, right? And we look at it and we say, oh, that's so nice. You know, that's so, oh, I'll make my house like that. I'll make my house like this. We design, we prepare, we plan just for our glory, for our pleasure, for us to feel nice. But God has created us for his glory. 
right? And each one of us, see, you see how uncommon we are. And we do the right thing by the word. We want to do the right thing. And we, we do anything wrong, we know how to put it right because we have that word of God with us. Yes, amen. So we are created new in Christ. We are created beautiful in Christ. We are created just how he planned us as his creation. He planned how we need to be, how I need to be, how Vanessa need to be. We are unique. We are his masterpiece. We are uncommon. We are precious in his eyes. We are the apple of his eyes. We are fearfully and wonderfully created. That means we are flawless. Wow. Amen. Imagine that, how that makes us feel, you know? And everyone is so, so, so beautiful. And coming here, we are women. We go through so many things. You know, but now we understand that it is our place to be where we need to be. That's our place. No one can take it. That, that's our baggage. You know, we can't share it. So that only makes us, our, our, our trials and tribulations only make us champion. They only take us to another level. And that word of God teaches us all that. Amen. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, anyone else has anything to share? Any testimony? I'll just get to brother. I'll see where he's. Okay, he's coming. So yes, anything to share? It, it, I don't know about you guys, you know. It just makes me feel so beautiful about myself. Because I didn't know which place I was in years ago. Right? There was so much coming at me. And now I know, oh, well, if it comes and it hurts a bit, I know. I was calling, I was, I was ringing my sister Suzanne the other day and just wending out. So we know we have a door to ring. We have a sister to ring. We just know, ring a sister. You know, and we call each other. And if, what do we speak? How do we advise each other? By the word of God. We don't look at the world anymore. How much the world can offer us. Yes, my dear sister, Divya, go, go ahead, beautiful. Praise Jesus, sister. Praise Jesus. So I just want a, a testimony which happened a few weeks back. So I was actually talking to my mother on uh, inform every time. So that time she was like having a severe stomach pain that she couldn't even talk to me. She was like crying in pain. And I was like that time since I was in word, and since I have got that confidence in the word, I just claimed Mark. I claimed that I just prayed in tongues for some time. And then I told the mountain where to go and what to do. And I uprooted that spirit of infirmity, which was troubling her. And uh, the next day I gave her that prayer of uh, drinking the blood of Jesus. So she did that prayer also. And after that, uh, I even told her that night because it's almost like 10 o'clock. So I told her, you will, well, you just keep telling by the wounds of Jesus, I'm completely healed. And she was uh, holding the rosary and she was saying it and she went to sleep. And the next day she did that prayer, uh, drinking the blood of Jesus. And I spoke to her that the next day she told that, She's not having that pain and it is gone. So I want to praise and thank God that I'm getting rooted in the world and able to handle the situations with the word of God and for the glory of God. Amen. Jesus, amen. How did you feel when you were doing that, Baba? Yeah, I was actually calm and I was asking Holy Spirit, what should I do in this situation? Should I call someone? From my, from my relatives to come and just console her or give her some remedy, home remedy or something like that. I was thinking with my own mind. But the Holy Spirit told me, be calm. Use the authority which God has given you. Use that authority and start praying in tongues. So when I did that, the next day I was like amazed the way the Holy Spirit was working through me and I saw that healing. Praise Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. God. Thank you for sharing, Divya. So, so we can all... I share one more testimony if, you, if I have time? Go ahead. Okay. You have plenty of time. So, brother, coming soon. Okay. Okay. So, as a, I, I did eating for the growth retreat, November did. Okay. I was initially in the beginning, I was hesitant. I was thinking whether I will be able to do it because I have a tab only, I have a laptop. So I was thinking whether this will work out for me or not. But then that time, my sister Kiyomi told me, you step out in faith and just ask the Holy Spirit to take control of you and he will help you to accomplish. So I was, I started doing that e-writing. It took some long time for me to get used to that. But uh, even my husband actually helped me in that typing, the e-writing part, because uh, I couldn't do the whole thing. So it's like we both started doing that e-writing e and then okay. we completed it. So when I look back, it was so amazing how the Holy Spirit is helping us when we step out in faith. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. So how did you feel when your husband was helping you? to do that that he was the one who actually motivated me because i was hesitant wow. to take it, but then told me you take it you yeah. can do it yes so, so and you... when we started e-writing we were completely forgot we forgot all the other problems or the storms which we were facing we were even deeply rooted because we were living it again and again and writing and typing it down so that was renewing our mind. Wow. So much. Yes. So, <coughs> awesome. So are you in our e-writing team? Uh, no, in the first writing, I'm not there. Would you like to join, Divya? You know, yeah, the the yes. leader who's the leader who's leading you is very patient yes. and she's a very good teacher. Yeah, I know that. So you're going to Mr. master Susan is every an amazing, bit of it. Correct. Is an amazing so, teacher. Yes. And, and you are just awesome, my darling. Yes. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, brother, over to you. Welcome. Yeah, yeah I can say it to Divya in 1 Corinthians 15 10. 1 Corinthians 15 10. Okay. Let's let's put it up. Baba, you know. Is there anybody there? Yes, yes, brother, coming. So this is not only for Divya, but for all you wonderful women of God. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Divya, you can read, Baba. 1 Corinthians 15 10. Yes, sister, I will read. Yeah. 15 10. But 10 10. It's 11. Can you come to 10, please? Yes. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. So St. Paul is saying, today whatever I am, I am supposed to be a murderer, a person who has persecuted the church, a person who has done so much of evil. I am supposed to be without an election, a candidate to go to hell. But I've come to tell you, if today I'm an apostle, it is only because of the mercy of God. And he not only forgave me, but by his grace, 
He is the one who has called me. He is the one who has ordained me. He is the one who has selected me. He is the one who has elected me. He is the one who has sent me. He is the one who has equipped me. He is the one who has empowered me. He is the one who has a plan for me. He is the one who has an assignment for me. And it is only because of his grace that today I can say boldly that I am the apostle of Christ, a bonded slave of Christ. And having known him, having kept his knowledge, all the knowledge that I had as a Pharisee, the position, the name, the power, the titles, the citizenship of Rome, all that I have, I consider it a loss, nothing but a dung compared to no Christ. So today if my riches are, my riches are the riches of the heavenly kingdom. So, every day, this grace is making me richer and richer in the resources that I gather of the heavenly kingdom. And what are the riches? Love, joy, peace, faith, patience, kindness, gentleness, meekness, self-control. Now, these are the riches of the heavenly kingdom for which I am working hard, really working hard to gather more and more of these riches, which is not corruptible, which cannot be stolen by the thief, and which never gets rusted. So God has given me this grace and this grace that was bestowed on me was not in vain. Like yesterday, I was talking in the Hindi channel and I was saying, there are so many of us who are gathered here who are real diamonds, but the problem is they don't know that they are diamonds. If only the grace given to them, if they begin to use it, they can be such a blessing in the king. Amen. Yes, brother. And I said, God has given everybody 24 hours currency. Now this currency that God has given 24 hours, I cannot save it for tomorrow. I have to spend it. And even if I don't use it, at 12 o'clock midnight, <laughs> account goes zero and new currency of 24 hours is downloaded in your life. Wow, that's so true though. <laughs> so I said to them, out of the 24 hours, where do you use your time to earn what riches? Yes, Jesus. Okay. As for me, I can say without a doubt, I am running day and night using my time to earn the riches of the heavenly kingdom. Amen. So the same grace is given to all of us in abundance. And grace is multiplied through the knowledge of God. So the more and more you have the knowledge of God, the more and more you intimacy with Jesus, you have this grace and peace multiplied. And Paul is saying, the grace that was given to me and the grace that was given to the apostles and the disciples who were with Jesus is the same. But the grace that I received from Jesus, not in flesh and blood, but in the spirit, has not gone wasted. I labored more abundantly than all the disciples put together. In other words, the riches that God gave me, the new life that God gave me, the spirit of God that God gave me, I did not allow the resources that God gave me to go wasted without profit. Amen. I began to use those grace day and night so abundantly about all the disciples and let me tell you, the labor that I put in was not my own. It was the grace of God that strengthened me to go and do what God has called me. So it so happened uh, about a week back, one of the leader in the team, uh, helpline leader in the team, very nice lady, 
she said to marina please i cannot take it i want to step down from my leadership but i will be the team to help everybody so marina sent me a message i did not respond so she said you talk to papa directly so she sent me a message and i said can you just wait for two three weeks god will speak to us please god and today when the meeting was going on i was sharing about 1 corinthians 15 10 and i said the whole day i preach and i found i am guilty of not using the grace to the full and i said god had given guess given me a very beautiful gift of taking a simple hymn and putting commentary and word of god and making it into a 30 minutes hymn and with which so many people can be blessed Thanks, and i foolishly for the last 6 months did not use that grace and it has gone wasted so as a penalty i take it upon me to use this grace in abundance and in the next 15 days i'm going to make at least 50 songs and not only that i'm going to start a new channel jclm worship where it will be 24 hours of this kind of hymns praise god now when i made that decision do i have to labor now absolutely can i waste my time no others i can't finish my my target because i've set the target higher than my ability higher than capacity and i said lord you are going to help me to do it now as i said that <coughs> i said i never chose god god chose me no men yes i did not get ordained because of my hard labor he he elected me and he is the one who has ordained me and empowered me and equipped me so my job is to use this grace that he has given me and that's the time the sister was listening and she called in the meeting and said i want to say something who am i to step down who am i to say i am not going to do it when he is the one who died for me to elect me he is the one who shed his blood for me so that i could be made righteous he is the one who took the curse on me on himself so that he could free me from the curse so who am i to say all these things she asked forgiveness and she said jesus till my last breath i am on your job she is working in the office but she said i will never ever allow the grace of god poured on me to go wasted so divya what do you say yes when i allow christ that grace then only i will be able to be pruned sorry yes i agree with what you have told brother no no no, no. when no, i no, use no. the grace when i use the grace okay yeah absolutely right when yes. i use the grace right but what about me saying i am not yet ready yeah. none uh-huh. of us are ready <laughs> when we step out in our weakness that's when the hard shell cracks the hard shell is there to give us unbelief all the time and that's what the devil uses our five senses to stop us from doing what god has called us to do and that's where you say lord anyway i'm not going to do it you are the one who is supposed to serve me Amen. so i'm going to say yes and i'm going to step out in faith i might make mistakes i might not be excellent i might be just uh, uh, not even uh, fit and god says in my kingdom i'm not looking for fit people i'm looking for people who are available for me i'm looking for people who can agree with me and be faithful to me i'm looking at those people who are willing to make corrections and be teachable so that i can teach them and they can make corrections and follow me Very so true. you say divya <coughs> divya Yes, brother. I agree that when I allow the grace of God to work in me, 
and when i labor then only i can see how the lord is working in me so you are on the job now yes brother i am that is what the word of god does it breaks the stronghold of the enemy congratulations Great. you know Amen. Leah, yes as brother. a woman i want to tell you the woman think because the society has made the woman think wrongly you are anointed child of god amen and remember this divya you will only be remembered in life for two things as a woman of god the problems you solve and as a woman of the world the problems you create praise god you decide which woman of which woman you want to be if you are a woman of god that means when you are doing that e writing you never did it for yourself i said today if that one corinthian 15 10 we are opening and reading he is talking about his own life that he has experienced but he has put it in writing thank god he put it in writing otherwise the day paul would die all that he had learned would be dead thank god the day divya dies she would have been dead but what she has done the e writing is ready to go for the next generations hallelujah thank you jesus amen so awesome. are you a woman of god who is solving the problem in your house only are you the woman of god who is solving the problem as long as you are living or are you the woman of god who is willing to solve the problems till life is on earth i am willing to solve the problems till the till i am on earth so congratulations praise god thank you jesus praise god amen and that is why i want to say when you make this decision now you are not a common person you are an uncommon person why common person will say i am ready to do the e writing in exchange what is my reward <laughs> yes tell me how much are you going to pay me that is what is a common woman of the world an uncommon woman is like mother teresa i want to give you this service free and i am not going to charge you any money i know society doesn't want you i know the child is thrown into the gutter i know this man is old and the family has thrown him out of the house come into my arms i will receive what's the charge i have to pay you you don't have to pay me anything how is it possible in today's world that i don't have to pay you anything because he paid his life for me to save me and today if i am ready to do it for you it is because of his life his blood that is running into my bones man praise god so beautiful brother so remember all of you you are an common woman hallelujah thank you and jesus and because you are an common woman your focus is not on the riches of this world your focus is on the riches of heavenly kingdom and these riches are infinite and they have no destruction they cannot be destroyed so when your focus is on the lord his kingdom his righteousness your energy that is that is flowing out of your 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 spirit the potential that god has put in you that energy that is coming out of you is not the future that you will bring profit to the world but the energy that is coming out of you is f a resources that is going to use that is going to be used to save lives from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light praise god come on divya uncommon woman <laughs> to god got an uncommon anointing 
uncommon love, uncommon forgiveness, mm -hmm. uncommon joy, uncommon peace, uncommon mm -hmm. wisdom of God. To wow. build up, to build up lives who are on the way to commit suicide, lives with depression, with fear, with oppression, marriages with divorce and separation, children rebellious and in addiction. Come on, uncommon woman, I'm talking to you. You are called for an uncommon assignment. And that uncommon assignment starts with e-writing. Because when you're writing, you're not writing your words, you're writing the words of the creator. And this creator is saying in Gospel of John, chapter 3, 34, whosoever he sends, that person speaks the words of God and God gives him the fullness of his spirit without measure. Can you wow. put that please? John 3, 34. Enough. <coughs> for he, for he whom God hath sent, speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. So God has anointed all of you, precious saints of God. And he wants you to learn to speak the language of heaven. And that is the word of God. Amen. So when you speak the words of Jesus, when you speak the words of the Father, praise God, he will give you a spirit without measure. He will give you the fullness of a spirit, not rationing, but infinitely. So all you women of God, you can make your future so significant, so amazingly big, that your yesterday's sorrow just disappears in the magnificent light of God's glory that is being prepared in the future. Praise God. Ah. Ah. That is why awesome. if you ask me, what do you do every day? I keep planting seeds of the heavenly kingdom building up the future so big that my yesterday looks so small. It doesn't even seem to appear anymore. It has just disappeared. Amen. Praise God. Let's take an example. An example of a woman named Ruth Ruth came from a generation of Moab where God had said, I'm going to curse this generation up to the seventh generation because the daughters got their father drunk and had sex with him so that they could get pregnant. And they did become pregnant and they had children and that is where the Moab came from. The father was Lot. So Ruth comes from this generation and she was a Moabite. She was raised in a very, very powerful kingdom of darkness. The culture was total darkness. It was it was really 
unimaginable that the daughters could have a physical relationship with their father to get pregnant. And this woman, Ruth, who is of this generation, gets married to Boaz, who is a Jew, the generation of Abraham. So, in other words, you can say a generation of God's chosen people getting married to a generation that people would call in today's world prostitute. Mm. Now, can you ever imagine that there was another prostitute when Joshua went to spy the land and her name was Rehab? She was a prostitute. But she gave shelter to the spies and said, when you come, you should spare my life and my family. And that happened. And she also happened to get married in the generation of Abraham. So you see, uh, Jesus had a lineage of great, great grandmothers. One is coming from the bloodline of prostitute. One is coming from the bloodline of Moab. So Ruth and Boaz, they brought forth a child called Obed and Obed produced Jesse and from Jesse came David. So if somebody is saying your ancestor is under curse, what bigger curse would be no matter what your ancestor did? Is there that curse bigger than the curse of Ruth, Moheb? And that is what the word of God is teaching us. That when Ruth made that decision to leave all that she belonged to the kingdom of darkness and join with her spouse boys and she had a mother-in-law, Naomi. And when her husband died, there was another daughter-in-law, Ofa. So both the sons died and Naomi decided to go back to Israel. So she told these two girls, you are young, so you can go back to your family. Orfa went back into darkness. As for Ruth, she said from now on, where you go, I go. Your God is my God. Your people are my people. Everything of yours is mine. And whatever is my God, my people and all that, I cut off that lineage completely and I join with you. Praise Jesus. So this was the great, great, great grandmother of Solomon who came from David. And Solomon was one of the wisest men who ever lived on earth. And through the same lineage of Ruth and Boaz came the precious son of the living God, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph and Mary. So here, God is sharing with us, telling us extremely sorry. So God is sharing with us and telling us, God never consults your past to decide your future. Your past might be extremely, extremely bad, might be extremely deep in the kingdom of darkness. But when you come to Jesus, he sanctifies you with his blood and makes you whiter than snow. 
So Satan may remind you of your yesterday's mistakes. The question is, are you going to stay on those mistakes and get yourself chained and be a prisoner for your life? Or are you going to listen to Jesus who has paid the price and become a curse for you so that you can experience Abraham's blessings? And if you, the uncommon anointed woman of God, is believing that God does not remember your mistakes anymore when you come to him in repentance and acknowledge your sin. He has made you righteous. And if you believe it, then you got to do something. You got to act like it. You got to talk like it. And you got to live like it. Come on. Praise God. You got to act like it. You got to talk like it. And you got to live like it. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We are talking to Divya again. Divya, uncommon woman. <laughs> are you willing to go Amen. where you have never been before? Brother, definitely. And that is what happened to Ruth. This uncommon woman is willing to go from her country to a husband's country where she has never been before. Praise God. So, does geography make a difference? Yes, in the Bible, yes. Abraham was in his father's house, a pagan. And God said, I want you and your wife to leave everything and come out of your father's house. And I will show you a place where you got to go. And when you get to that place, I will give you inheritance of prosperity and my goodness. So did they have to leave the place? Yes. Yes. In the same way, my friend, you have to leave the place. Let me give an example. I was in Bombay and I was preaching the word. And in Bombay, there were the leaders who came against me and they accused me and they stopped me from preaching in Bombay. And my wife, because of my anger, left me to go to Bangalore. And now God said, do you love your wife? I said, yes. So don't bring her by force to Bombay. You show her love by doing what she wants. And that's how I shifted to Bangalore. Now, when my geography changed, to my surprise, the leaders in Bangalore embraced me till today, hugged me, welcomed me, and gave me a platform to do the ministry work. Praise God. So, wow. so geography makes a difference. If I was in Bombay, by now, there would have been no platform for me. Yes. So what the devil meant for evil to destroy my marriage, actually speaking, applying the uncommon faith, applying the uncommon teachings of Jesus, got me an uncommon destination with an uncommon harvest. Amen. Praise God. So there are times when God will take you out of your comfort zone and take you a, and change your location so that he can unlock the full potential that he has put in you to get you to a place called success. Elijah was being fed by ravens and there was a stream and everything was going fine. Every day he would have food. But when the stream died, dried, God had to tell Elijah, you have to change your location. It's time for you to change. And he said, go to, out to a, outside the city and go to the next one. And there you will find a widow at the gate of that city. 
and she is the one who will provide food for you. She is the one who will look after you. A widow, yeah. And when he goes there, he finds that widow uh, searching for collecting wood, fire, wood for fire to cook food. And he says, "Woman, prepare. What are you doing?" She, uh, she said, "I'm preparing. Uh, I'm collecting wood for the fire for the fire because I want to cook the meal." So he says, "Okay, when you cook, bring the meal to me first." <laughs> and she says, I do not have the meal. Then one so the the last meal that I have for my son and me, and then we are going to die. And he says, no, no, no. You prepare the meal and give that first a portion of it to me. How would it look? There would be today in the headline, paper headline, a man of God cheats a widow. She had the last meal with her son and the man of God snatches the first share and fills his stomach. Uh, yes. <laughs> but the man of God wants to teach this widow if you really trust God then show your faith. Show your faith. Thank you. Come on, show your faith by giving a portion of your meal to the man of God. Did that change the whole situation of her life? Oh, yes. yes. He said, what do you have? She said, I've got little oil. He said, okay, collect as many vessels as you want. And the oil began to multiply and kept on filling the vessels that she never had lacked in the days of famine. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do pineapples grow in, uh, in Perth? Yes, brother. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Oh, you think so? Because I never grew them in my place. So, so what know. did you grow? Mangoes. Oh, so mangoes grow in Perth? Yes. Ha ha. But mangoes don't grow in Canada. Yeah, it's because of the season, isn't it? Because the snow will kill the tree in no time. Yes. So that means the seed has the potential, but it should be also that seed has to go in a location which is favorable climate. Mm. Yes. In the same way, Samuel heard a voice of God calling out his name. Samuel, Samuel. And an uncommon voice began to call him. And he went to Eli thinking that Eli is calling. And the Eli, the high priest, told him, it's not me who's calling, but God is calling. So the third time when God, when you hear the voice saying, say, here I am. Hmm? And that boy became a prophet. Amen. Isaiah also heard a voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said Isaiah, here am I, send me. Today also the voice is crying out, who is going to do the e-writing? Who is going to preach the gospel? Who is going to give this riches of heaven to those who are in darkness? And what is Divya going to say? Divya, what are you going to say, Baba? I will say, I will do the work of the Lord. Here I am. <laughs> Here I am. Praise Here God. I am, Lord. <laughs> That's why the uncommon women are called today to this meeting because the same voice is asking each one, who shall I send? Who will go for us? Praise and God. And has to answer it. Because Here I am, Lord. <laughs> because each one of you, uncommon woman, 
with an uncommon anointing you are a seed praise god and everything you have is a seed i'm a seed and everything that i have is a seed and what am i doing right now i whatever i have on this platform i'm bringing my seed and planting it here Praise Jesus. So what is the manufacturer doing is bringing the raw material from the market and that's a seed. Then it goes through the process and gets the product ready. Praise God. Praise God. And he goes and sells and out of the seed he gets the profit. It's the harvest. So your future is a harvest produced by the seeds you are willing to sow. so divya e writing is a seed and when you are doing that and putting that labor and using your time to do that you are actually producing your future through the seed which is your harvest amen amen and common woman of god did you hear that yes brother i heard praise god are these words edifying you yes it is edifying me than uh, i could ever imagine i had prepared some other topic that one line of yours is <laughs> in the topic praise god <laughs> so to bring in the harvest in the kingdom of god is the mission of every believer and a person is successful not according to the world system the person is successful when he discovers god's purpose and assignment and he has used his time and resources that god had given him to finish that assignment is called success mm so if i had not to be doing what i'm doing now and i had to be in the business and my business would flourish even if the world would say he's a successful man in the eyes of god i am not doing what god had sent me for let's say if jesus is come today and he's doing his ministry and he has got a powerful healing ministry powerful deliverance ministry powerful uh, teaching ministry powerful food industry that is multiplying food all these industries are good all the ministries are good but he would not be called successful if he had not to go to the cross because the cross was the mission for which he had come <coughs> in the same way we all have a mission for which god has sent us And unless I discover that by everyday fellowship with the Holy Spirit and studying the Word, I discover it. So it is when I discover and begin to use these resources, not alone, but getting connected to other people. that's when that connection with other people and join them with the same mission and the vision is now making the assignment successful if today maria had not welcome me to come on the platform i would not have been doing what i'm doing i would have been probably making the song or taking a good quality sleep before the godly marriage program starts praise god but now her network is she called me and at the same time she gathered all you lovely lovely ladies across the globe and she used her networking together and now she brought me here where there is 
planting of seeds. And these quality uncommon seeds are being planted in uncommon soil, uncommon good soil, with networking together, it is producing success and from success to extraordinary success. Wow, praise God, praise Jesus. Isn't that true? Very true, brother. 100%. I never knew you. I, right. I never knew. Yes. There are so many people who came for the meeting. Why should you stick to me? Because right. it is God who is networking with one another. And yes. Satan knows if this networking can work, it's going to be in destruction. So yes. Satan will try his best to cut me off from you. Correct. But when you are flooded with love, you are focusing on Jesus and not the lies of the devil. Amen. Yes. So the networking that you wanted to do, you probably could not get it done when everything was normal, when everything became uncommon with COVID, that Satan brought havoc. God brought a new platform that we can get connected without wow. flight and gathering people across the globe with like-mindedness and say, come on, let's bring the uncommon seed here, each one of you, and let's put it together, each one of you, and out of this is coming the warriors that is going to shake the nations. Wow, praise God, so beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And that is what Jesus is giving us an example. He was born in Bethlehem, grew in Nazareth, got crucified in Jerusalem. He performed miracles in Galilee, met a prostitute woman in Samaria. Not a prostitute, but having many husbands. Met another woman with demons Magdalene. Went to Bethany because he had a very loving family there and raised the two sisters' brother, Lazarus, from the dead. So you see, Jesus went about moving, changing locations, arising, then departing from that place, then saying, let's go to the other side of the shore. And there he means a man with demonic spirits, sends the spirit into the pigs. Those people don't welcome him. He comes back to this side. Jairus comes and he heals Jairus' daughter, raises her from the dead. So Jesus did not have only people in the synagogue. He met people along the way. He met people of different backgrounds. He did not look at them. He met a, 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 a person with leprosy, 10 people. He healed them all. So when Jesus went up the hill, came down the mountain, by the river, lakeside, and this, great multitudes followed him. And he, not only that, even the pagans like the centurion, came to him asking for healing for his servant. Jesus even went to Peter's house where his mother-in-law was sick and healed her. So there were times when Jesus went to a place and there were times when people came to his place. But the common was, he used what his father gave him. The father's words, the father's plan and purpose to fulfill it in the lives of others. 
with Jesus. So Jesus also to spread his kingdom needed people. And that's why he chose the 12. Then he chose the 70. And then he chose 120 of them all put together. People from different places. People with different attitudes, knowledge, you name it. And they were all supposed to be in that one place and pray together in love and in unity. And then they received the most, most powerful experience a man can ever experience, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The same Jesus with the Holy Spirit power is resurrection. Spoke after the day of Pentecost. Before the day of Pentecost, before going to heaven, he spoke and said, stay here. Don't leave Jerusalem. I will send you another person, the helper. Just see the multiplication from 12 to 70, 70 to 120, 120 to 3,000, 3,000. Oh my God, it's multiplied. Praise God, yes. And these people got multiplied because they followed Jesus, means they followed his teachings and obeyed his teachings. So you see, before success comes, there are going to be different changes that has to be done in our lives. So just as Abraham got successful when he went out to that place, Joseph was in his father's house until his brother sold him as a slave. When he, the Ishmaelites took him to Egypt and Egypt is where Joseph had to practice love and forgiveness. And he does and have a servant's heart. And that's how in Egypt he was promoted to become the governor of Egypt. And that is why an uncommon woman is willing to go where she has never been before. Wow. My time is up. Praise God. And I'm going. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. I believe we learned something at least. So much. This was just meant to be for us today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Divya, for giving us a wonderful Yes. Topic. Wow. And the best part Praise is God. By the topic, by the time the topic got over, Divya also got it over of the wrong thinking and she's pregnant with new future. Amen. Amen. And I'm Please. so glad that Divya not only got pregnant, she got all the women pregnant in one shot. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Wow, Divya. <laughs> awesome. Praise God. <laughs> so I want to see the women, are they really happy or they are just, uh, you know, just uh, can you stop that screen? Let me see the beautiful woman before I leave. We are definitely happy, brother. <laughs> can you just put off the screen, please? Baba Enoch? Yeah, um, there's not a single person on the camera. Oh, man. There you go. <laughs> are you see, camera on? <laughs> All these happy faces. Un uncommon teaching sowed uncommon seed in uncommon soil. <laughs> Thank you so much. Praise God. That was so beautiful. Awesome. So good to see all the uncommon women. Amen. With uncommon success for the future.
Thank you, Papa. And an uncommon blessing in the family, in the marriage, and an uncommon oh. mother, uncommon wife, uncommon mm. sister, mm. uncommon friend, mm. uncommon warrior, uncommon champion. Hallelujah. Uncommon servant. I don't know what to say. It is just the list is going on and on, on, and, on and on and on. Praise God. <laughs> An uncommon anointed woman of God, uncommon equipped with power, uncommon love, uncommon peace. Oh, uncommon wow, gentleness, uncommon, uncommon self-control. Praise uncommon God. faith, uncommon patience, uncommon endurance, <laughs> uncommon perseverance. Amen. 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 Uncommon wow. humility, uncommon kindness, uncommon wow. gentleness. Wow. Praise God. You are uncommon. Amen. Created by God. Unique, no duplicate like you a perfect sample to bring forth uncommon harvest, uncommon legacy, Amen. uncommon charity, wow. <laughs> yes. uncommon warrior and an athlete who falls but gets up. Praise Thank God. You. Brother. Every <laughs> falls, gets up. Thank you, Jesus. And shows an uncommon, unquitting <laughs> Praise um, God. Thank you, Jesus. And common wounds. <laughs> but uncommon healing. Amen. Wow. Uncommon reaching out. Amen. Praise God. Uncommon thirst for God. Uncommon yes. thirst Amen. for the lost souls. Amen. Amen. My God. Uncommon anointing of deliverance and healing. <laughs> uncommon tongue to speak the words of edification and encouragement and the gospel of Christ. Praise Jesus. Uncommon mind of Christ. Amen. Uncommon hair of beauty. <laughs> uncommon body, which is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Uncommon mm. eyes like that of an eagle that not only sees the natural, <laughs> but also sees into the spiritual. Uncommon ears that can hear Praise the voice God. of God and does not hear the voice of the stranger. Amen. Uncommon Amen. nose that can smell the presence of God, the fragrance of God, the aroma of God. <laughs> Praise God. Uncommon taste that Amen. when words come out, they are sweeter than honey. Amen. Wow. Praise God. Uncommon strength Amen. that from outside looks to be so weak but from inside Amen. stands eye to eye with Satan and says get out of this place. Praise Amen. God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Brother, and thank you for being an uncommon child with an uncommon tongue of a teacher, with Amen. an uncommon wisdom, coming and sharing this word with us and just blessing one and all, each one of us. I, I don't even know. Me. You I brought tears in this. my eyes. I want to say you are an uncommon woman who's ready to go through that uncommon nine months Again and again and again <laughs> to bring uncommon children into this world. Praise God. Amen. You face an uncommon labor pain, but from that war, you give birth to a beautiful baby. <laughs> Amen. And that's why you all are uncommon people who multiply on this earth. Praise God. Praise God, brother. Thank you so much. Thank so you. That's why I want to salute you again, uncommon woman of God. Thank you, Papa. <laughs> Thank you. Because <laughs> everything you say is so I can take some half an hour sleep and get ready. Yeah, thank you so I've much. I've still half an hour more. 
before we get okay, into please. an uncommon godly marriage. Godly <laughs> marriage. Yes. Praise the Lord. Love you all. Love you. Hey, I, I, am I am I coming next Sunday? Yes. yes. See, I was just going to say you could give an as excuse saying, "Oh, I've got something on, Maria. I can't come," you know. But then no, no, no. I I can come for forty five minutes. What I came today. No, it you wasn't forty five minutes. minutes. It was huh? more than it was more than that, brother. But yes. Today, did I speak more than thirty minutes? <laughs> yes. Think... Yes. Yes. <laughs> I spoke more than thirty minutes. See, you are an uncommon. A preacher and a preacher with an uncommon yes. voice and uncommon time and the uncommon words and un <laughs> an uncommon greedy for time, <laughs> an uncommon greedy for the mic, <laughs> and an uncommon <laughs> thirst to preach the gospel day and night. Amen. Amen. Praise mm. God. <laughs> Thank uncommon, you. uncommon bullet to that one. Thank you, soldiers of God. <laughs> Thank you, Papa. Bye. Jesus. Go and bring the uncommon harvest because you have got an uncommon net. Amen. 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 The gospel of Christ. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you so Love much. Love you all. Love you too. Thank you, Papa. Love you, Papa. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I, am I there next Sunday? Yes, of course. Okay. You are there. Love you too, brother. Love you all. Bye. Love you. Bye. Papa, we want you I, 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 I'll, I'll tell you honestly, right now what I'm feeling, if only on one of the window, my mom would have been there. Wow. She would have she said, this son whom I prayed for till I Amen. closed my eyes, I never saw even a glimpse of change. Mm. Even a spark of change. Amen. But even though I did not see the seeds that I planted of prayers, even if I'm dead and gone, my prayers kept chasing him till my prayers got him. Amen. Wow, that's, that's what awesome. I want to leave with you. Amen. A sweet memory of my mom that her prayers did not go unanswered. Amen. It was an uncommon love for me because I don't deserve to be loved. I only hurted her and brought sorrow after sorrow in her eyes. Yes. But that uncommon love, uncommon patience, uncommon endurance, uncommon not quitting till the last breath, till the last breath. Mm. Even when she was dying, she had tears. She could not talk, but she had tears looking at me that she was leaving me and going. And at that time, I did not have tears because I was, my heart was so hardened. It did not bother me. Mm -hmm. But now, when I'm looking on those windows, I can see one window of my mom saying, Praise God. I love you, my son. And my love, the sleepless night that I spent and the prayers that I said has not gone wasted. Wow. God. They still chased you <sighs> and Satan had lost his grip over you and today I can see you what was my dream and I leave this uncommon faith to you mothers of uncommon children. Amen. 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 None of your prayers for your spouse your children, Amen. everybody in this world will ever go unanswered. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Papa. Thank and you. I want to tell every one of you, you are a mother and God has made a mother so very different because she has got an uncommon, unlimited love. So remember, Amen. you don't have only children that came from your womb. Amen. You have children that came from the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. The children Hallelujah. that came from your womb are only coming through the blood, your blood. Yes. But the children out there which are coming from your womb through the blood of Jesus are in millions. Hallelujah. So in your womb are millions of people who whom you are going to give birth to, 
with your love, patience, endurance, and never quitting love. That is your prayer. Praise yeah. Jesus. Praise Somebody Jesus. who came today has got Jesus. a tremendous issue with the neck. You would have gone to the doctor and you, I don't know what report you got from the doctor, but whoever you are, can you just raise your hand? There's an issue with your neck. I don't know what that is. It can be a lump. It can be something very serious with your neck. And now the Lord is creating a miracle. If uh, you can hear me say that, can you just lift your hand, please? You're surely there. Don't feel fearful. Raise your hand. I heard the voice of God tell me this. You can put it on the chat. You are surely there. Thank you, Jesus. The issue is with your neck. Nobody? Okay. Heavenly Father, I do not know, but I have heard your voice talking to me. And I believe that's your voice. And right now, I'm speaking to that tumor, I'm speaking to that lump, I'm speaking to that nerve, I'm speaking to that bones, muscles, tissue, skin, whatever it is. In the name of Jesus, I speak to all the organs of your body right now. In the name of Jesus, I take authority and I curse that spirit of infirmity you are cursed right now. I command you, leave that body. Come out of that body right now in the name of Jesus. And this anointing to cast out demons, heal the sick is not only flowing into that person who needs this healing, but also in all of you, women of God, this anointing to go and heal the sick, cast out demons, proclaim the word of God and live a victorious life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Person who needed a healing, my friend, you are set free. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Just remind me when we meet on next Sunday. Yes. This this episode, this part. Yes, maybe they were on YouTube or something, brother. Because, because I'm so sure that person is going to come. And most probably what I, I what I feel in my spirit is it has to do something with a tumor or with a lump. I don't use this gift mostly, very rarely. And I heard him say that. And surely it is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Or anybody having tumors anywhere in your body, this anointing that is flowing right now is an uncommon anointing for uncommon healing of uncommon sicknesses to destroy it completely. And on Sunday when we come back, surely there will be so many who are coming and saying, healing of different kinds and especially the neck. Amen. That's what started the whole healing thing because I was supposed to go and the Lord stopped me and made me continue it. Praise God. God, praise so God. glad that I stopped. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Un I... Uncommon, most anointed child of God <laughs> with an uncommon tongue. 
uncommon wisdom. <laughs> and now I have to go and get an uncommon sleep of 20 minutes. Praise God. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you. God. Bye. Thank you, brother. Wow. Bye, brother. Uncommon sisters of mine. What are we going to do now? What have we studied? See, what touched me is we are successful, right? When we fulfill the yes. purpose of God. When we finish, when we are on a mission to finish the assignment that God has given us, God has created us with. This is somehow I gathered that. And that's what touched me. We are successful when we when we fulfill the assignment. No, when we fulfill the purpose of God and finish the assignment with a mission that God has created us with. Oh my God, yeah. Melissa, I can't wait for the recap. I can't wait for the notes. This was such yeah, an praise God. Yeah. uncommon teaching. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and thank you, Divya. You are the cause. You are the root cause of all this. It was uncommon. Praise God. Mission. I was actually planning to tell this testimony for the past two weeks, but then I don't know, it's getting delayed. <laughs> It was so uncommon. The right time. <laughs> Praise God. Wonderful. Awesome. See, you made us all pregnant, Divya, including you. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, anyone Jesus. else has to share anything about the teaching? Divya, you have to share anything about the teaching? Today's teaching, some points that you have noted before we finish. I realized that, uh, that uncommon potential... God has already planted in us. It has been planted many years before the earth was formed. But then to know that uncommon potential which God has given us, we need to understand the knowledge of the word of God. Praise God. Yes. And you know, and also like when we say, oh, anyone ready for everyone has got uncommon seed inside of your uncommon soil. Amen. Yeah. And then Amen. when we say, are you ready for prayers? No, 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 I'm not. So you're opening an uncommon door <laughs> for that uncommon enemy. <laughs> sister, can I just can I just flag one small or one thing, one big thing actually that Sister Divya raised in her testimony and so so important. And um, she had flagged that when she herself and her husband which is actually it, it's, it's such a beautiful testimony in itself that they were doing the the assignment together but when they focused on the e-writing assignment it took their mind off the issues going on around them um mm. and they were complete they were doing matthew 6 33 all okay. the way seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and everything else shall be added unto you but what Amen. what the issue that can commonly come up is, is, for example, I might get a message from somebody saying, I'm sorry, sister, I have issues with work, so I can't do my assignment. Or I have, for example, I'm feeling unwell or I can't do my assignment. And what the Holy Spirit teaches us all as we, we, we go along our e-writing journey is that that's exactly the time that you do your e-writing assignment and that you do it so awesomely and, and you fine tune it so well that those other external situations and circumstances just disappear or just get solved as you as you go about your day so the more we for example um if if you're feeling really unwell take out the laptop start typing the notes or ask the holy spirit who you can share the word of god with today in in the the simplest way possible no matter how awful you're feeling no matter how awful the life circumstances are the more you step out to do his work the more you will see his glory so praise god and thank you sister divia for raising that yes praise Amen. god sister susan thank you Thank you, Thank you Susan. That was very minute Jesus, and very, Jesus. very precious point that you picked. Yes. Praise That's God. Beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And it took and their Jesus. mind off all this. Yes, so true. Amen. And that's why I'm telling you, my sisters, everyone has beautiful stuff inside of me. Don't say Amen. I'm not ready yet. Yes. Amen. 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 Oh. And, and 
And the most beautiful part of it all is that when we start hearing the word of God, when we plug our ears and we hear the word of God, that is when that uncommon belief starts happening. And yes. you begin to realize that I am uncommon. And because I'm uncommon, I'm able to step outside my comfort zone and doing things with that uncommon belief. Amen. So it is so awesome. Hallelujah. Sorry, I missed. I just uh, got logged off and Divya was talking, but I will hear that, Divya. I'm yeah, just yeah. too happy just to know that you shared your testimony again. Praise Thank God. you, Sister Judy, Hallelujah. for your great, great Hallelujah. Of no, the Sweden, book of life in actually, me. no, no, no. I tell you that every time we hear this, you know, you increase us as well. Yeah. Yes. I am I am just too excited. I missed all this part. I think when Suzanne started off, that's when I went off. Yes. And uh, I was like, oh God, I want to come back. But I'm going to hear it again. I'm going to hear it again. I'm just yes. too ha excited just to Praise hear God. what you spoke. Praise God. And, and imagine how Praise much God. is increased Jesus. And Absolutely. Absolutely. Every, Amen. Absolutely. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. It is so, awesome. it is so awesome. You know, it is so awesome when, when we all come together and we hear, okay, there's another sister. She has an uncommon testimony and wow. that becomes a learning for us. Praise God. Thank you. Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, Thank you, now Jesus. we must see next week who this person is with the, with the neck issues. Oh, with an yes, uncommon yes, yes. problem. And we can't hide it from that evil one. And I, I, I don't think, Maria, there will be just one. There no. will be definitely more. Praise God. There will be more. Praise Amen. God. And and uh, we mm. believe that whoever the sister or brother who's hearing will come out in boldness and testify what Hallelujah. our uncommon God has done. Because Thank we have an uncommon God. We are not like all of everyone who talks about God, 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 and there are there are so many that they talk about. But we are people, you know what is I, I just feel excited. Uh, as on this group as women, because we are all uncommon. Amen. We are people whom, you know, who have gone through a stage when someone has said, you are useless, you are nothing. But today, when we look at, look at ourselves in, you know, there's a time we couldn't even look into the mirror because we were like that, beaten up all the time. But today, when we look into the mirror and someone is beating us up, we are like, come on, come on. Because I'm filled with agape love. So beat me up. Because when I'm beaten, I know my next promotion is in the line. Amen. And praise God. You know, and we are, we are excited. I, I don't know. It's like every time I think of, a, you know, of a women's session, I'm like, Lord, wow, so many women, all of us coming together. And each one is saying, I have to bring another woman who is in trouble and trouble her troubles. And with that, <laughs> yeah. With that, I become all the more, isn't it? I'm, yeah. You know, that's the way each and every one of us mm. are feeling. It is that constant love, that constant joy that we come on the session. You know, it's like you can be not even dressed. That's when our cameras go off. <laughs> yeah. but it is a fact. But at the same time, we are saying, I have to be there. And the evil yes. one is saying, oh, no, it's a holiday. It's family time. But we, are, but we keep telling ourselves we are uncommon. And we are greedy to hear the word. That's when Papa wow, says, really isn't God. it? Yes. And when Papa says, am I invited next Sunday? We have to <laughs> come every Sunday. I mean, we have an uncommon preacher. It's the fact who has Amen. taught us this uncommon truth. But you know what? They were supposed to have this retreat in Mangalore. Yeah, so from yeah. 15th, it was supposed to yes. be uncommon. We didn't know who would preach. But look what uncommon thing happened. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And Sister, Absolutely. Judy, Sister Judy, you, you brought yeah, up a very yeah. important wisdom key there as well, that unjust suffering is the final stage before supernatural manifestation. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Yes. Because now our eyes are only fixed on Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. And, Amen. and our source is the Holy Spirit. So even there are times when I would really feel a little low, feel upset, feel angry. I know immediately I have my partner. So immediately I could talk to the Holy Spirit. Earlier, we would be talking everything out. 
everything that was inside of us would come out on somebody else but now every time someone says something against me oh i recognize who i am in jesus yes. that is so precious and that keeps us you know with our heads lifted up because we can boast only of what we are in christ mm. that's what we do you boast only in christ and and you can do that only when we are constantly connected to the word when you are hearing the word you know you're reflecting on the word so praise god for everything uncommon in our lives today right. and that is how jesus was he was uncommon that's why he came he took everything in on himself and he said finished it is finished praise god you know and when we see our situations earlier when we see our situations it was like suffering but today when we see our uh, our situations it is an uncommon faith exactly like abraham no matter what lord the answer is it's done healed restored so we also believe today in everything that is uncommon and that's why i am just saying that whoever the person is what papa was sharing i think there will be more than one in that for sure and those people when they come out in the open and start believing in the uncommon i think it is heaven on earth like you and i are enjoying it like people ask what is so different and i say the peace that we have within us when we are in the presence nobody can give us that you cannot buy that peace you cannot buy that love and i think every one of us will agree on this there was a time i would say lord how this agape love sometimes we get angry lord how do i get this agape love and it is just one voice to the holy spirit and i don't know how he works it out and he suddenly you know is like filling you with love 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 all the time and you are absolutely calm so calm you and i am like i can't even believe like in this situation am i so calm still enjoying so praise god praise. i really say this praise god father that you have given us an uncommon preacher who has taught us how to fall in love with you and to have an uncommon faith in you you know it is so awesome praise. it is so awesome and all you e writers what you know each one of you are doing constantly you know writing and preparing the word it is i mean i don't have any answers to say to that because every time we sit you know and prepare the word it's like word to word you take one line and then prepare then again you go back when you're doing that back and forth that seed is already sown in you isn't that so beautiful praise god praise god Thank hallelujah you suzanne you. you are always loved i don't have yes. to say that to you but you are always loved eternally blessed and with the entire team i mean it is awesome praise okay. god and i didn't know that we are joined of course she has been busy i've been busy my own but when i'm hearing her make that statement i was like wow wow god. and i urge every sister here on this on our on our women's group even on the youtube i i i tell you only one thing sisters i know you have your own schedule every day but i tell you please join this e writing it is not that we are desperate for people to come but we ask you to come for your sake so that you are set free and Amen. that is what each and every one of us i mean correct me if i'm wrong each and every one of us are doing the same thing we have come on this platform not to change somebody else we have come on this platform because we want to have the lifestyle of jesus not the lifestyle of the world so i urge you sisters all over the world when you hear when you hear us please please write to us and tell us you want to join the e writing and it is going to help you just as you heard devia's testimony you will have your testimony as well in yes. jesus name amen. amen amen you know i the holy spirit was prompting me to share something and i don't know if i have to share it completely right because i don't know go Where ahead I... go ahead what happened is i randomly happened to call a person because i said to that person i'll call you and i didn't get time so yesterday i happened to call that person so this is these are the triplets three children randomly budged into a 
our um, session where we are praying for children, blessings of children, you know. So they got in there, they were, they are triplets. They lost their mother when they were, I think, six years old. And so it's, you know, and there was, there's an auntie looking after them. So I don't know, somehow I thought, okay, because I was supposed to call and I didn't get to call. So yesterday I called and I spoke to that auntie and you won't believe my dear sisters what I saw. Those three children, I think are eight or nine, nine or something maybe. They have three chairs, okay, chairs, three seats. One is for the father, God the father. One is for the son, that's Jesus. And one is for mm. the Holy Spirit. Wow. They fellowship with them. They sit, uh, they kneel and they fell. Children, they are nine-year-old. They, they're playful. They sit and they fellowship with them. And they speak everything because the Holy Spirit, Jesus, God the Father speaks to them. Right? And because they entered that session, we said to them, okay, you pray. Okay, so we have babies. So now yesterday they're telling me, you told us to pray for babies. Everyone is going to get children. And they even told me the names of the children, right? And they showed me on their book. I know I must get some pictures on their book. They are writing like, a, you know, different languages. So full page is written, written, written. You don't even know. Some are like graphs. Some are like, wow. I don't know what I saw, honestly. And that picture is in my mind. Wow. Please so start. I was talking and that uh, auntie was showing me all this page by page. They have finished books with all this. So imagine when they had started. So how long do they sit? They sit for about three and a half to four hours. All together as a family. And the three Holy Spirit talks already. to them. No, three prophets. The whole family sits. Because they, oh, okay, leave, okay. they leave everything later. Like they have to do the cooking and everything. So they leave it later. They fellowship first. And wow. these children, only the children, they take down these notes. And as I was talking, you know, they one by one, they're coming. I'm talking to the auntie. So the one girl comes and say, Holy Spirit said, what did Holy Spirit tell you to tell me? So one person, one said, Jesus told you to do the sower and the seed. Jesus said, go and tell her about the sower and the seed. Right? So that is the message. So, you know, I have to think about it. I can't even grasp about it, you know. So sower and the seed, that's the parable given to me. And then the other one came and said, you know, Holy Spirit said he loves you. Can you imagine, my dear sisters, coming from these little children? So from when was it? Saturday, yesterday. From yesterday, this is at the back of my mind. And I asked myself a question. They are doing it for three and a half hours, just sitting at the feet of Jesus, right? And I am here proclaiming I'm doing a lot, but I'm always running around busy for Jesus, trying to see, trying to show how busy I am for Jesus, while I don't even have time to spend with him, you know, and listen to him. Oh my God, it just, and more is coming, but it was just, that made me think, and I realized, like, because of them, I managed to make time and sit there. And actually, I could actually converse with my Holy Spirit who's inside of me, you know. I could actually mm -hmm. spend that quality time and, and just say, yes, Lord, I am here at your feet. What would you like to tell me? You know? Amen. Amen. So, and coming from that child, what touched me. And that's why I felt like I, I didn't want to share it, but then I was prompted to share it. Because I never know who's going to benefit out of it. Because that time with him is very important. Even with what we have learned today, we, we just go and say, this is what I've learned, Lord. You know, what do you want me to do with this? You know, mm -hmm. and I, I managed to write as well today because I was, the, the soft, gentle voice talks. He speaks. But we have to stop to listen to that. We just have to stop and just shut down to listen to that mighty, precious, gentle voice. You know, and, and that's what it is. And look at the teaching today. How much, how much did it build us up? So this is what I'm saying. And, and you know, little child, Jesus can speak through a little child. 
And I, I told my, my girls, like who I was, we were having this session. And so that time is very special. And they even know the names of the children. Can you imagine? <laughs> praise praise God. God. Yeah, praise God. So awesome. So thank Open you. Open the mouth of suffering. Oh, yes. Praise yes. God. Let's Hallelujah. try spending that time, you know, and that is going to change our life. And that is going Amen. to Absolutely. just transform our lives, renew our minds, you know, and make Amen. us who, who God created us for his pleasure and his glory. Because it's all about yes. him. Praise Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Amen. You, Jesus. Okay, my dear all sister right. Caroline. Caroline. Caroline is yes. Okay, here she comes. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to your soul. Thank you that we can live in your light and walk in your truth. May the truth that is revealed in your word dwell in our hearts and stir us to action. Gracious Father, thank you for teaching us your word today. Let all what we have discussed here bear fruit in our lives and in the other people. We choose to put our confidence in you and not man. We lift our eyes to you, O Lord, because our help comes from you. Lord, help us to fear you and walk in your ways that we may never give room for our enemy to control our lives. May your angels go before us, making all their crooked paths straight. Thank you for the lives that you have prepared beforehand for us to touch with your word. As we depart, Lord, we ask you to be with us. May all glory and honor come back to you in everything that we do, in Jesus' name, we believe and pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, Caroline. Amen. Thank Praise you, Jesus. God. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Natalie, Caroline. Thank you for the prayers today. Thank you, Vanessa, for the recap. And thank you, every e-writer, for the beautiful writing that you've done.